car's center of gravity is at G. I want to find out what the biggest value of theta can be so that the car stays on the hill. My free body diagram really doesn't need to have anything on it except some sort of box. I'll have the weight of the car which acts at the center of gravity. So it's 2.5 feet up and since we're not given any other information I'm going to assume that it's 2.5 feet from the middle to the center of gravity as well. My car sits on my angle of theta hill so by similar triangles you can also know that that's theta. I have at each wheel a normal force. So I'll have NA and NB where I have a five foot wheelbase. That's the distance between my two normal forces. I also have, of course, at each place, since I know that mu is 0.4, I'm going to have friction along each wheel. Now, there's absolutely no reason to have two friction forces because the two forces are collinear. So while I will have an FA and an FB, there's nothing in statics that will allow me to separate one from the other. So what I'm going to do is just call this F. That's all that I have. I have some force F, which acts tangent to the surface, and which will accompany, encompass both the friction from the A, wheel at A and the wheel at B. Now that I have my free body diagram, I can write my equations of equilibrium. Some of the forces in X, that's going to be the sine component of my weight. That equals my friction force. The sum of my forces in Y, W cosine theta, equals Na plus Nb. Now, I didn't say this, but I should. I have taken x to be in this direction and y to be in that direction. There's no reason to consider that I have to take x and y as perpendicular and horizontal to the page. I have three forces, Na, Nb, and Fa, which are either parallel or perpendicular to my slope. I only have one w that would be in this coordinate system. It's easier to change one force than three. Now, my sum of the moments I will consider to be taken at wheel A. So I get W cosine theta times 2.5. W sine theta turns in the other direction. And NB times 5. Those all have to equal zero. Once I have my equations of equilibrium without assuming that the car either tips over or slips down the slope, now I can figure out which is which. Which happens first. If it tips, my condition is that the NB is going to go equal, be equal to zero. At a very small theta, both the tire at A and the tire at B hold up the car. As the slope gets bigger and bigger, NB takes less and less of the weight. And finally, as it tips, NB is going to be equal to zero. I can substitute that into the sum of the moments, and I get W cosine theta times 2.5 minus W sine theta times 2.5 equals zero. My weights cancel and my two and a halfs cancel, so theta would be 45 degrees. That's not my answer necessarily. I need to consider whether it slips or not. The coefficient for slipping, for the condition for slipping is that F equals F max, which is mu times N. Of course, in this case, I have two normal forces, one in each wheel, and I've added my two friction forces, A and B, which are collinear, to be just the one F, because that's all I can deal with in statics. From the sum of the forces in x, I can say f equals w sine theta. And from the sum of the forces in y, na plus nb is equal to w cosine theta. So my w's cancel, and I get tan theta equals 0.4. Well, that happens at theta equals 21.8. Now, what is the question? Theta, to keep the car on the hill, has to be less than 21.8, because as soon as it gets to that point, the car slips off the hill.